uh, the uh, advent of COVID, the government has given every teaching hospital, every federal medical hospital, uh, one oxygen generating plant. That means one in every state. So you have one generating plant. Then the Global Fund, we have been discussing with them uh, because they are helping us with uh, fighting AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. And I approach them and say, if you have some surplus fund, why don't you help us with repairing our old oxygen plants? We have several old non-functioning plants. So we have new ones, and then we are able to repair all the old ones after they have been assessed. So we shall have oxygen sufficiency, not only for COVID, but later on for things like asthma or pneumonia, which before now were virtually neglected. So we shall be able to add value in being able to attend to all those uh, illnesses that also require oxygen, but had a lot of difficulty accessing oxygen. So those are the values that are being added. Finally, the uh, various companies who are, are, are adding donations. Uh, when I went to Lagos, I saw that Airtel, Airtel was helping to build an additional isolation wing at the University of Lagos. And in other places, you see where NNPC here, Guagualada NNPC has also built something. They are donating ambulances. So various uh, corporate organizations are adding value to our hospitals. And we hope that that continues and will begin to reform uh, the ambulance system. Now, we are also creating an emergency medical service and ambulance system, beginning with ambulances that have been donated. And these ambulances would make it possible to use a number 112. And you call 112 and you can get an ambulance coming to your house or to wherever the emergency is free of charge. It is at no cost to the user and they will be taken to a hospital that's an emergency. The emergency will be done at no cost to users. So we can reduce maternal deaths. We can reduce infant and under five deaths if we are able to provide first aid. In fact, there are some calculations that believe we can reduce these deaths by 50% if you're able to provide access to healthcare and make that healthcare affordable, that is to say, at no cost to the user. So those are all the benefits that we expect from the health sector for the health sector uh, uh, and continuing uh, from the COVID-19 outbreak. Um, and uh, I will take it together with the, uh, this, the question of discontinuation of AstraZeneca use in South Africa. Nigeria's access to COVID-19 vaccines is from three sources. The first is called the COVAX facility. COVAX was set up by the World Health Organization and Gavi, for those of you who know Gavi, Gavi is the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization. And it's a, it's a multi-sectoral organization that helps African, I mean, well, low and lower middle income countries with acquiring vaccines. So they are the ones who put um, up money and also collected donations from various sources, World Bank, Bill Gates, and so on, $6 billion to help low and lower middle income countries finance their vaccine requirement for COVID-19. As of last count, they had gathered $6 billion and there are 92 countries that are eligible for the COVAX facility. And the COVAX facility will cover 20% of our population with vaccines, 20%. Now, the second one is the AVAT, Af African Vaccine Acquisition Task Team, set up by the African Union, to now add more vaccines to the portfolio. And uh, this AVAT uh, is going to pull together resources from the Afrexim Bank based in Cairo to procure vaccines for all African countries to be able to have access to vaccines so that none is left behind. No one is left behind. And they will give African countries five to seven years to pay back. The third uh, avenue is by bilaterals, those who are individually giving to us, like MTN, donated 7 million doses to Africa, and uh, the government of India uh, donated 100,000 doses to Nigeria. Of the 7 million doses that was given to Africa by MDN, Nigeria is going to get 1.4 million as our own share. 
Now, you can see that all of these are coming from various sources, but put together, they almost satisfy our needs so that we don't really need to go and procure now. But the question is, when are they delivering? That is not in our hand. It is in the hand of the person who is bringing it to us. We have been told to open an account with the uh, African Union, uh, with Afrexim Bank, under the African Union. We have done that already successfully because we are going to pay for that part of the vaccine. The COVAX vaccine is free at no cost to us. It's made from donations. We want to immunize about 60 to 70% of our population. If COVAX immunizes 20, then we have about 50, 40 to 50 to immunize within the next two years. So we have to pay for that, minus any uh, donations or that we get, like the MTN donation, for example. All those ones reduce the quantities that we have to get, that we have to uh, uh, purchase, or any other that in future are given to us free of charge. Now, uh, COVAX will start delivering to African countries before the end of February. That's what they told us. But they didn't tell us which country is first, or which is second, or which is third. So COVAX begins to deliver before the end of um, um, uh, February of this month. And we hope that before the end of this month, it will be our turn or latest by beginning of next month. As for us here, we are ready to use the vaccination once it arrives. We have met all the conditions. They have asked us to sign what you call an indemnification form. We have done that. The indemnification means that you do not hold us responsible for anything that happens from using this vaccine. That's a standard process. We've signed that indemnification, and uh, so we are waiting for the vaccines to arrive any time. I don't think that they will arrive in all African countries at the same time. They arrive one by one, stage by stage, but the order in which they arrive is determined by COVAX, uh, who is uh, the person, the, the entity donating this uh, vaccine. Now, the largest number of vaccines we are getting is the AstraZeneca in Africa. And this AstraZeneca is made under license. It's a UK vaccine, but it's manufactured under license by the Serum Institute of India. So the Serum Institute of India has brought, is donating all these vaccines. And then the South Africans discovered that this vaccine had some weaknesses uh, when against the own variant, you know, those of you who have heard of the South African virus variant will know that uh, it's a peculiar variant by itself. And the South Africans said that it didn't seem to be very effective against their own variant. Now we turn to the World Health Organization and say, what do we do? They say, well, if you don't have that variant, don't worry, use it. In Nigeria, we do not have the South African variant. So use it, it will be effective. So therefore, we are using it because it is we do not have a South African virus variant here in our country. And if we start the vaccination on time and get Nigerians immunized, then they are immune. So even if the variant comes in later on, it probably will not have any effect. So it is uh, not so effective in South Africa. It doesn't mean it's harmful. What it means, I mean, it may not be so effective. But here it is effective because that variant is not here with us. Now, uh, as for the uh, health sector improvement, yes, we did hope that we are able to use the uh, impetus from the COVID-19 to improve our health service, and that is going on very well. We have been able to expand, the first of all, the NCDC, its capacity to detect diseases and trace diseases. The number of laboratories we had, when, when, when uh, public health laboratories, not the laboratory, the hospital, but the public health laboratory, we had two of them at the beginning of, of this um, outbreak. Now we have over 80 laboratories. That's a huge investment. Now NCDC has also raised its cap uh, cap capabilities, has trained a lot of people. It's now able to do faster and further diagnostics. The hospitals themselves are benefiting because they have uh, also received, apart from what government has provided, Government is giving every hospital uh, 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 an isolation center. So uh, all government hospitals will get an isolation center. Many of them have been built already. And then they will get a 10-bed ICU. So all those processes are going on. If you go to Guagualada, they are just completing the additional isolation center there and their ICU. I visited Lagos over the weekend, and I saw that they are 
they are expanding their ICU also and their uh, uh, um, isolation center. Then there is oxygen. The new discovery from COVID-19 is that oxygen is really what you need. A high flu oxygen supplementation, which we didn't have before because we only had as much oxygen as we needed at the time. Mm -hmm.